Peruvian friends. All right, we just finished chapter 12, and now we're going to start on chapter 13. Now, if you remember, they just decided that the bugs and James all wanted to go to sleep. Chapter 13. A few minutes later, Miss Spider had made the first bed. It was hanging from the ceiling, suspended by a rope of threads at either end, so it actually looked more like a hammock than a bed. But it was a magnificent affair, and the stuff that it was made of shimmered like silk in the pale moonlight. I do hope you'll find it comfortable, Miss Spider said to the old green grasshopper. I made it as soft and as silky as I possibly could. I spun it with gossamer. <sighs> That's a much better quality thread than the one I use for my own web. Thank you so much, my dear lady, the old green grasshopper said, climbing into the hammock. Ah, this is just what I needed. Good night, everybody. Good night. Then Miss Spider spun the next hammock and the ladybird got in. After that, she spun a long one for the centipede and an even longer one for the earthworm. And how do you like your bed, she said to James when it came to his turn. Hard or soft? I like it soft, thank you very much, James answered. For goodness sake, stop staring around the room and get on with my boots, the centipede said. You and I are never going to get any sleep at this rate. And kindly line them up neatly in pairs as you take them off. Don't just throw them over your shoulder. James worked away frantically at the centipede's boots. Each one had laces that had to be untied and loosened before it could be pulled off. And to make matters worse, the la all the laces were all tied up in the most terrible, complicated knots that had to be unpicked with fingernails. It was just awful. It took about two hours. And by the time James had pulled off the last boot of all and had lined them all up together on the row in the floor, 21 pairs all together, the centipede was fast asleep. "'Wake up, centipede,' whispered James, giving him a gentle dig in the stomach. "'It's time for bed!' Thank you, my dear child, the centipede said, opening his eyes. Then he got down off the sofa and ambled across the room and crawled into his hammock. James got into his own hammock. And oh, how soft and comfortable it was compared to the hard wear boards that his aunts had always made him sleep on at home. Lights out, the centipede said drowsily. Nothing happened. Turn out the light, he called, raising his voice. James glanced around the room, wondering which of the others he might be talking to, but they were all asleep. The old green grasshopper was snoring loudly through his nose, and the ladybird was making whistling noises as she breathed, and the earthworm was coiled up like a spring at one end of his hammock, wheezing and blowing through his open mouth. As for Miss Spider, she had made a lovely web for herself across one corner of the room, and James could see her crouching right in the very center of it, mumbling softly in her dreams. <coughs> <coughs> I said, turn out the light, shouted the centipede angrily. Are you talking to me? James asked him. Of course I'm not talking to you, the centipede answered. That crazy glowworm has gone to sleep with her light on. For the first time since entering the room, James glanced up at the ceiling, and there he saw a most magnificent sight, something that looked like a gigantic fly without wings. It was at least three feet long was standing upside down upon its six legs in the middle of the ceiling, and the tail end of this creature seemed to be literally on fire. See, look, there's the green grasshopper asleep in his bed. A brilliant greenish light, as bright as the brightest electric bulb, was shining out of its tail and lighting up the whole room. Is that a glowworm? asked James, staring at the light. It doesn't look like a worm of any sort to me. Of course it's a glowworm, the centipede answered. At least that's what she calls herself. Although, actually, you are quite right. She isn't really a worm at all. Glowworms are never worms. They are simply lady fireflies without wings. Get up, wake up. But the glowworm didn't stir, so the centipede reached out of his hammock and picked up one of his boots from the floor. Put out that wretched light, he shouted, hurling boot up at the ceiling. The glowworm slowly opened one eye and stared at the centipede. There is no need to be rude, she said coldly, all in good time. Come on, come on, shouted the centipede, or I'll put it out for you. Oh, hello, James. The glowworm said, looking down and giving James a little wave and a little smile. I didn't see you come in. Welcome, my dear boy. Welcome and good night. Then click and out went the light. James Henry Totter lay there in the darkness with his eyes wide open, listening to the strange sleeping noises that the creatures were making all around him and wondering what on earth was going to happen to him in the morning. Already he was beginning to like his new friends very much. They were not nearly as terrible as they looked. In fact, they weren't really terrible at all. They seemed extremely kind and helpful in spite of all the shouting and arguing that went on between them. Good night, old green grasshopper, he whispered. Good night, ladybird. Good night, Miss Spider. But before he could get through with them all, 
he had fallen fast asleep. <coughs> Chapter 14. We're off, someone was shouting, we're off at last. James woke up with a jump and looked about him. The creatures were all out of their hammocks and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly the floor gave a great heave as though an earthquake were taking place. Here we go, shouted the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight. What's happening, cried James, leaping out of his hammock. What's going on? The ladybird, who was obviously a kind and gentle creature, came over and stood beside him. In case you don't know it, she said, we are about to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've all been living on for so long. We are about to roll away inside this great, big, beautiful peach to a land of, 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 to a land of, of what? asked James. Oh, never you mind, said the ladybird, but nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop and those two repulsive aunts of yours. Here, here, they all shouted, here, here. You may not have noticed it, the ladybird went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope, and therefore the only thing that has been stopping this peach from rolling right away, right from the very beginning, is the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break the stem off, and there we go. Watch it, cried Miss Spider as the room gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quite, not quite. At this moment, continued the ladybird, our centipede, who has a pair of jaws as sharp as razors, is up there on top of the peach, nibbling away that stem. In fact, he must nearly be through it, as you can tell from the way we're lurching about. Would you like me to take you under my wing so that you won't fall over when we start rolling? That's very kind of you, said James, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, the centipede stuck his grinning face through a hole in the ceiling and shouted, I've done it. We're off. The journey begins, he cried. And who knows where it will end, muttered the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it can only mean trouble. Nonsense, said the ladybird. We are now about to visit the most marvelous places and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, centipede? There is no knowing what we shall see, cried the centipede. <coughs> we may see a creature with forty-nine heads who lives in the desolate snow, and whenever he catches a cold, which he dreads, he has forty-nine noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink spotted scrunch who can chew up a man with one bite. He likes to eat five of them roasted for lunch and eighteen for its supper at night. We may see a dragon and nobody knows that we won't see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of his hair. Toes out of the tufts of his hair? Oh my goodness. I don't want toes in my hair. I don't want toes in my hair. We may see the sweet little biddly bright hen, so playful and so kind and so well-bred. And such beautiful eggs, you just boil them and then they explode and they blow off your head. A new and a nocerous surely you'll see in the nor norvous and norable net, who sing when it stings you goes in at the knee and comes out through the top of your hat. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost. We may die in an earthquake or tremor. Or nastier still, we may even be tossed on the hordes of a furious dilemma. But who cares? Let's go from this terrible hill. Let us roll, let us bowl, let us plunge. Let's go rolling and bowling and spinning until we're away from old Spiker and Sponge. One second later, slowly, insidiously, almost gently, the great peach started to lean forward and steal into motion. The whole room began to tilt over, and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and then crashed against the far wall. So did James and the ladybird and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and the earthworm, and also the centipede, who had just come slithering quickly down the wall. And they're off. Do you guys think they're going to start going on their adventures? All right, my friend, that's it for this one. Have a good night.